Hi everybody, welcome back. As you can see today we're again talking stonks and other furniture. This time for the AR-15 platform. Now again, uh, this sort of video is aimed at newer shooters. People just getting into it. May be interested in getting one for themselves. You have options. We're going to start with some things that can be a bit confusing when you're getting into it and uh, we'll go from there. First we'll start with some classics. This stock is an older either SP1 stock from Colt or a straight up old old school first model M16 stock. Either way it spent some time in a rack as or a rack as this number demonstrates. Whether it's police or military surplus or both, I couldn't tell you. I got it like this, and I actually like this stock a lot, even though it's kind of short on my shoulder. I didn't buy these rifles for me. This is an A1 type stock that I got with a rifle length buffer tube. You'll be seeing that shortly. It has the trap door and the uh, space for the cleaning kit in here. I don't have one of those. I, I need to get one. I don't care for this because the only part of it that has any grip is the uh, trap door there. This just wants to slip and slide on clothes. This has some grip to it. Handguard wise, we have the uh, sort of faux mid-length uh, carbine A2 looking handguards that came with the Adams Arms rifle, which is going to be getting a new stock today, or getting this stock today. A uh, black Magpul handguard that I bought right after I got that rifle. These are of course two pieces, upper and lower, instead of left and right like the originals. More importantly, for this segment of the video, let's talk about the carbine stocks. Now, I'm sure some of you have seen on the news a picture of something like this and the word bump stock next to it, which is entirely wrong. For one, it has these little holes. This latches into those holes. You'd have to tape this down just to get it to move freely. Now, if you did that, Every time that rifle moves forward, this is coming off your shoulder. It ain't worth a damn for bump firing. This is just a carbine stock. This is a facsimile of an AR-15 buffer tube. Uh, this was on a stock set I bought for an AK for my AK a long time ago. Wasn't really happy with it, and it turns out it suffers from an issue that is common to AR-15s. Both of these stocks have what they call mil spec buffer tubes. Let me just pry that off of there. Now it's hard to tell it, but this is sized as a commercial buffer tube. What that means is it is too fat to properly work on this stock. It also means that the stocks that come on commercial tubes are too wide to properly work on a mil spec tube. The damn thing rattles around on there. It's a, they're, they're tits on a bore useless. When you're shopping, find out which it has if you want to go with the carbine type stocks. Because you make that mistake and you go to buy another stock and get the wrong thing. It, it's a whole pain in the ass. It all started with Colt way back wanting to differentiate their military models from their civilian models so they thought that was some kind of a solution it's complete horseshit that or I believe I have heard that it was done by other manufacturers to get around some shit with Colt doesn't really matter to me despite what you may see here today I am not an AR-15 guy these rifles were purchased as something for my children to use when they get 
to the point. Now, these two stocks here fail me a bit. They got a little bit of wiggle in them. The one on my Radical Firearms rifle does not. And it's going to keep that stock. I won't be changing that. Now, the handguards, two piece affairs. Some are heat shielded, some are not. I recommend a heat shielded version. Pretty simple. And I think that about covers this part of it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go grab the rifle in question, and we are going to make some changes to it. I'll explain further some of the issues when it comes to changing out stocks in an AR-15, particularly going from, say, this to a carbine-type stock. This castle nut bumps up against a little plate at the end of the uh, rear of the receiver. Installing that plate and holding that plate in place seems like a simple affair. But if your finger slips off while you're pushing the, or while you're tightening things down, the, there's a spring that can cause you a problem. We'll get into that in a minute once I have the other rifle apart. Let me clear this off and we'll get started. All right, let's start right here. As you can see, the rifle is clear. Go ahead and shut that bolt. Safety's on, safety's off. All right, now, the spring I mentioned, you can see the pin here. Whoop, is what holds a little bitty pin in there to act as a detent for this. Come on, there we go. There we go. Now, when it's like this, it's Jim Dandy. You can actually see the little tube, I think, yeah, right there. A little bitty tube formed into the lower receiver is where that spring rides. Taking this stock off, it just sort of eases on out. And then when you put on a regular stock here, you just ease it on back in, screw it down. Easy peasy. With that little plate, if that thing moves while you are trying to attach and cinch down your carbine stock and you don't notice, you're gonna kink it. And it won't, it won't ruin it, but it will piss you off. Anyway, let's get on with things. Now, it's just a matter of opening this trap door and very gingerly removing this screw. Now it will start to ease off of there so you want to pay a little bit of attention and just get it out enough to get it loose. Like that. Now we see the spring that I mentioned right there. Yeah. This is a rifle length buffer tube. The difference between this and what they call an A2 is there's a nut that fits over this that mimics it and fits in the slightly longer A2 stock. Not required for that. Now, you see this projection right here fits into a little dimple right there. Got the shift. There we go. Now we just get down good and tight. Not too tight. We're dealing with aluminum and steel here. 
All right. There's that. Now, this ring, called a D-ring, or delta ring, can be troublesome. Some weapons, different springs and such used in the uh, manufacture. I think what we'll do first is put the original furniture. You can see the gas piston here. There's a cut in there to fit it. This is weird doing it at these angles. Yeah. Top one on first. Pull your delta to the rear. Son of a bitch. There we go. They actually make a wrench for that purpose that I do not own. All right. Then we take our bottom. Line the little tab up in our forward. All right, now. Good. There we go. There we go. See? Not a bad looking gun with that. And it does work quite well. But... These are going for much thinner hands than mine. And I do like the feel of the Magpul. The Magpul works really well. Okay, so again, hopefully smoother this time. Get it in there, lock it in place. And these are also the uh, Magpul MOE and MOE M lock, which is what this is. This is a old school MOE. I got that thing for like 13 bucks. But I also can't attach squat to it, so. <clears throat> and one thing this rifle did not come with was a forward sling swivel. They just assumed everybody was going to change the hand guards. And that everybody's willing to spend a you know, couple hundred bucks for tools. I'm not. I'm a cheapskate. But there it is. Nice and finished. Looks pretty good. Zero five eight. As you see, it comes up a little short on me. That'll fit my kids. And it's not uncomfortable to use, so I can still shoot it. It's all good. Stocks on there good and tight. Handguard's good and tight. But yeah, that's today's exercise and driving me nuts with a stuck screw. Anywho. I hope that was at least a little bit entertaining for everybody. And I thank you for watching. I'm hoping I got all that shit in frame because I am not doing it again. Done it enough. But yeah, that's a good little rifle. Easy to clean too. These piston systems are nifty that way. But yeah. Thanks for joining me, and, uh, oh yeah. Yep, function test passed. Good to go. Thank you much, and I will see you.